Look what I got at the market today. <gasps> this is called pomtong in Korean. Um, this is a type of like almost like flat open cabbage that only comes out in the spring. Pomtong pom in Korean is um, spring. So when this comes out, I know spring is about to come and I'm so excited because I look forward to this every single year. This tastes so good in miso soup and also my favorite is when you marinate it in this um, red pepper paste kind of sauce situation. It's called pomtong kochori and I'm so excited right now. This is going to be for dinner. Just look how gorgeous this cabbage is, like the color on this. Let's start off with the marinade first. Let's start off with... One, two, three, four. Some fish sauce. One, two. One of soy sauce. Maybe two splashes of vinegar. I have apple cider vinegar. One of me, um, chung or ume plum extract. This is supposed to be like a little bit spicy, a little bit sour, um, vinegary, a little bit sweet. So a little bit of sugar as well. One sugar. And then a block of garlic. It'll melt later. Because I have it, a little bit of ginger. Maybe that much. And then two spoonfuls of sesame oil. And that's it. I'm just going to wait for the sugar to dissolve and the garlic to melt. I'm also going to add in some Korean pears. Um, if you don't have it, it's completely optional, but I do have it in the house. And it adds like a really lovely, crunchy, sweet element to the whole dish, so... I just cut them into strips like this. So I completely forgot to show this part, but I just grabbed the cabbage and then the pear and the marinade and I also threw in some sesame seeds and then mix everything together. And we've got ourselves a lovely spring cabbage side dish. Um, honestly, it works as a main meal for me as well. Just throw in some rice, a lovely fried egg, and mix it all together and eat it kind of like a bibimbap and you've got yourself a very simple, healthy, and delicious meal. And yeah, this is it. Y'all, I'm so excited right now because I was doing some cleaning on my hall in my hallway and there were a couple boxes, like packages I haven't opened yet that I completely forgot about because they were um, hidden under piles of laundry that I needed to do. And then one of those boxes was, wait for it. <laughs> ah, do you know who these are? They're like little Tamagotchi characters. This is like a Tamagotchi themed bracelet and um, this is from the brand Unjust Jewelry and I found them on Instagram as I was scrolling. But then the first time I discovered them, they were like completely sold out. So I turned on my notifications in hopes that they would restock them and they did and then I like bought it so fast. But the only thing is I bought this like I think at least a month or two ago. I don't know if they still have it in stock but <gasps> I'm so... I'm not prepared to open this. Look, just one more time. Even the inside is cute. Okay, let's open it. Let's open it. I already know it's gonna be cute. <laughs> it's so cute! You have to look. Look at this beauty. <sighs> it's just so cute, that's all I have to say. There's no other words to describe it besides it's so cute. It makes me feel like a kid again and 
I don't know, it's so cute. That's it. That's all I have to say. Hands down, one of the best things I've purchased in a really long time. And every time I wear this and I look at it, I'm just gonna keep smiling. So this is worth every single penny. In fact, I feel like if I wear it for a long time, I'm only making money because this is like, this is like a session of free therapy for me because my goodness, this is so cute. So if you are a Tamagotchi fan, like check out Unjust Jewelry and if it's still in stock, run and get it because the whole experience of this was amazing, like from start to finish, like the packaging and the, the process of like opening it and then the actual product itself is just amazing. Look at this smile, guys. This smile is not going away because every time I look at it, I'm only gonna smile harder. And I know I need to calm down but not for another five to 10 minutes because I'm just gonna keep staring at this while I play the music just to make a whole occasion out of it, but okay. I'm gonna try to stop. Try. Bye. Let's do a closet clean out, y'all. It's time. It's time to get organized. This isn't going to be everything. I'm going to have to work in chunks because I have too much things. So it's not going to be possible to do all of it in one day. This will be part one. Let's start off with jeans. This is not even all of it, but let's start off with the ones that I can find right now. First off, it's this um, corduroy... It's been um, cut. I didn't cut it. I bought the second hand and then the previous owner cut it. And I bought it and it was too short and seam-wise, so gonna let go of that. This one's from Urban Outfitters, but it was this cute little corduroy pants. Doesn't fit, gotta go. And I have two jeans in the same style but different wash. They're both from Weekday and it's in the Bond. Wore these really well for I think one or two vacations, but it's just too much of a straight fit for me. I prefer a wider leg now. So gotta say bye to these. One from Pistola. I just don't like like jeans with holes or like frayed edges anymore it's no longer like my personal style so i never reach for these a thrifted pair of levi shorts that do not fit me anymore Ooh, another one from weekday i used to have this really bad habit of buying clothes that were smaller intentionally smaller or keeping things that didn't fit um, in hopes that it would motivate me to work out and lose weight but it's just these jeans are reminded that we're not meant to fit into clothes clothes are meant to fit you so I no longer am buying clothes that are too small for me in hopes that I'm going to lose weight. That's just not the way to go. Never wore these. Waste of my money. Never doing that again to myself. Pair of mom jeans from Urban Outfitters. Another pair of mom jeans from Levi's. I'm just not that into mom jeans anymore, so bye-bye. These are a thrifted pair of Calvin Klein's. Um, it's just too, um, too much of a light wash for me, so I don't reach for it anymore, so bye. I have um, two from the same brand from ILYSM Kinda or I Love You So Much Kinda. This is the red one. It's very cute. Cherry. Same thing on the back with this little cute little cherry print. This design is like that. It's this sweater set from Mayfair Group. I have so many sweater sets, I just don't reach for this one anymore. It's, it says Compassion on the front and don't leave home without it. It's very, it's a very comfy oversized fit, but I've literally only worn this set once since getting it like two, three years ago. So bye. And one last sweater actually. This is one from Ragged Priest. It's this little stripe situation. It's more of a sweater dress though, I think, because it's very long. And 
looking through like my old clothes um it brings me so much nostalgia because i went through so many different phases so i'm like reminded of all the different phases that i went through while looking through this it's very it's kind of fun <laughs> so moving on to dresses i have one from urban outfitters it's in this cute little pink print and this dress actually taught me a really important lesson about personal style because i got this dress actually secondhand because I saw it on an influencer and she looks so cute so I scoured Depop and Poshmark and I found it for really cheap so I got it and uh, I didn't really ask myself um, I know this dress is cute but do you think I'm, you're gonna wear it does it align with your personal style and if I answer if I asked myself that question the answer would have been no because is it cute yes is it cute on her yes I tend not to go for pink on myself too often it's just she looks so cute and I was so influenced but it's a reminder that just because it looks cute on someone else doesn't mean you'll like it on yourself and that you should really ask yourself do you think you'll reach for it if you get it and if the answer is no then don't get it you know oh another lesson okay this it's this little dress from urban outfitters as well and this little really breezy vacation-y floral print i remember exactly why i got this dress it was on sale on top of a sale so it only ended up being like twenty dollars and in my mind at that time i thought twenty dollars for a dress from urban outfitters that's really really cheap i need to get it another lesson that just because something is on sale for really cheap you should not get it if you don't really like it like if i ask myself like hey like i know this your dress is cheap but do you really like it or do you like it because of the price there's a difference between liking the item for itself and liking it because of the price tag and i know for sure i like this because of the price tag because i only wore this like once or twice and i never reached for it again and at the end of the day no matter how cheap you can get something if you are never going to reach for it, you're just not making your money back if you don't ever wear it so if you see something on sale like heavily discounted and you're tempted breathe and ask yourself do you like what well, if this wasn't on sale would you even like it and if the answer is uh, it's not a hard yes then maybe think twice about buying it because that's what i need to do for myself it's not something that like i'm 100 percent perfect at but i'm working myself towards it like i'm trying you know oh why does everything have a story i'm so sad about this one it's this little cute long sleeve from free people i really didn't want to let go of this because this is something that my mom bought for me and that means a lot to me because I have a hard time like I bought this one like years ago but even then I had a hard time asking my mom to buy things for me but I really 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 wanted it and at that time because free people is kind of expensive you know and I remember I was either like 18 or 19 and even though I had a job then like it just I just couldn't take the plunge like spend like $70 I remember this was like 68 or $70 and I just couldn't take the plunge to buy something that expensive. So like after hesitating a lot, I remember it was either for Christmas or something. I asked my mom for this and she bought it for me and I never wore it. I don't, I don't know why, but I never wore it. And I don't think I'll ever wear it. And just, I just need to give it up, you know, make room. But it makes me a little sad to give up something that my mom bought me. Next up is this um, cute little mesh shirt from Lisa Says Scott. It's still like new with tags. There's a lot, lot of lessons I'm being reminded of, but this one taught is teaching me that you should not wait to wear special clothes. If you like something, just wear it. You don't have to make an occasion out of it. If you're going grocery shopping, if you're doing like random mundane things, just wear your stuff or it's going to go to waste. Because I really thought, I have this and the floral printed one. I'm keeping the floral printed one, but this pattern just isn't my style anymore. But it really was my style back then. So had I worn it back then, I would have gotten a lot of joy out of it, but... Not anymore, so just wear your stuff, Hannah. Like, it doesn't need to be a special day. Just wear it. Next up is this um, long sleeve by The Line by K with like a little lovely chest cutout. I just don't like showing too much cleavage most of the times because just cuz. And I don't know why I got this, knowing that, but I must have been feeling particularly bold that day. So, never wore this. Bye bye. This long t-shirt dress from lazy oaf i had a very very hardcore tie-dye phase if it was in tie-dye like i had to have it these are remnants of that phase they're both from the um urban outfitters both the same design just this one and this one that was originally white but i washed something red with it and now it turned pink so last up is going to be this set from storettes it's this little hans tooth set um, this cardigan and mini skirt. 
both of which I've never worn before, which brings me to an important point about why I'm doing all of this. Not just to free up space in my room, but also just I'm trying to focus on the how much and what I'm consuming, like be more mindful and intentional about what I'm spending my money on. Because I've known for a while now that I'm an emotional spender. It's one of the many unhealthy coping mechanisms that I've learned for myself because I mean, I realized this a long time ago where I've never developed healthy ways to identify and express negative emotions. So I've picked up some pretty unhealthy habits and one of them is emotional spending. And so I end up with a lot of clothes where like I buy it and I never wear it because I'm realizing that I'm not buying it because I actually like it. I'm buying for the sake of possessing. I don't know where that stems from. I haven't worked that deep yet. And um, I'm just trying to be more mindful about the things that I allow into my house, like clothes or shoes or bags or any physical things. Um, I'm by no means perfect. I'm a human being. I make so many mistakes. I don't think I can fix over a decade's worth of bad habits in a short time span, especially when it's rooted in much deeper issues. But I think the important thing to remember for myself is that I'm trying. And just to remind myself that growth and progress is not linear. I'm a human being. I'm going to fall. I'm going to make mistakes. I have a handful of purchases that I've made in the past year that I wish that I had thought twice about and I really regret buying. But like I said, it's important not to beat yourself up too much over it. Just to remind yourself that these things happen and that next time just try to be a little bit more careful. And yeah, and that's it for my closet clear out for now, part one. And what is hopefully... Uh, upward progress i got back from a really long day of work so i quickly ate dinner and i'm going to bed and i'm going to unwind by reading hello stranger by katherine center i picked up this book because i really enjoyed her other book the bodyguard and so i was hoping that i would enjoy this one too and so far i do because i feel like she writes really good rom-com books where it's like very light and fluffy so after a long day when i don't want to read anything like too like emotionally tolling or like heavy this is the book and she does a really good job of like writing believable like romance because sometimes you know you read romance books and like you're kind of like lost as to why or how the characters even like fell in love with each other but she's really good at like setting up the characters and the interactions and the build-up that you actually believe that they're in love and i like that i've been in a reading slump for like the past month or two and i'm finding that the best way for me to get over that slump is to watch people on youtube talk about books because when you hear people talk about something with such enthusiasm and joy you can't help but want to share in that joy so i've like started to pick reading back up again there's a lot of books i want to check out there's still a lot of books in my bookshelf that i have to start reading and yeah i'm just excited about books again and that's a great thing and i think this is where i'm gonna call it a night I'm just gonna finish a couple chapters of the book and go to sleep because I am tired. It's been a long day. And before I leave, I just want to say thank you so, so, so much for watching. And I will see you again next time. Bye.